Welcome to the second tutorial for Arrays for Chapter 10 with Java Programming for the ICS3U class at Hamilton District Christian High School. In our first program we learned what indexes were and what elements were and also how to traverse an array and throw some data into an array and pull the information out that you want or the certain element that you wanted to view. In this example we're going to set up and declare an array and this time we're using an integer array so int the array called rnum is going to equal new integers. We're going to have a hundred indexes or a hundred elements in it, meaning that we can hold up to a hundred different numbers in that array. Uh, we're going to populate the array differently this time. In our first example, we just kind of assigned values to it. In this example here, we're actually going to just generate some random numbers and populate the array. So different random numbers from one to six, simulating a dice toss as if we're rolling a dice a hundred times. Um, so we're just going to assign those values to the array and then we're also going to traverse the array to see what the values are. Let's quickly run this program and we'll see what it does. And all we're doing is getting values from one through six. So this populate the array section here, rnum one equals int, so we're just getting our random number. Again, notice up here that we start with an index or an i value of 0 because the first element has the index value of 0. And we're going to loop while i is less than rnum.length, rnum.length, rnum being our array, and length is the length of the array or how many index values it has. And we're adding 1 to i each time we, we go through the loop. So that's just populating our array. Uh, traversing our array is a little bit different. Our for loop is the same, however the only di really different thing here is system.out.print and we're just printing out the value of the array. So that's a quick little run through for how to populate an array with some random numbers and also how to traverse or how to show the array. I've just added a little bit of code here. I've added a system.out.print line to give myself a blank line. And here I want to traverse the array in reverse order. My for statement needs to change a fair bit. So this time it's for int i equals rnum.length. Again, length being the number of index values. But here I have to do minus one. Because if I do rnum.length, it's going to say, yep, you've got 100 elements in here. But really, my last element, as we learned in the last video, is one less has the index value of one less than the number of elements in the array. Uh, we're going to loop as long as i is greater than or equal to zero, and because we're going to go backwards, we want this number to reduce, we have to do i minus minus. What we're doing here in our system.out is I want to actually show you the element number, and I want to show you the value that it has. So let's have a, a run through this program, and feel free at any time through these videos to kind of stop pause the video, look at the code, and try to figure things out. But I'm going to run my program here. We're going to notice here that we're going to get a whole lot of this. Well, let's scroll up here on my output screen. And we'll notice that. Here's my random numbers from the first time where I traversed my array and just displayed them. But here I'm saying element number and element number 99 because again we have a hundred elements but the index value is actually 99. It's going to give my value for all of the ones, and as I scroll down, we'll notice that my last one is a zero. So element number zero has a one in it. That's a, a quick little run through for traversing an array forwards and backwards. And hopefully you've kind of looked at uh, some of the things that I'm trying to do with arrays. We've got an idea of how to use the length um, feature of an array to figure out how many index values or how many elements are in it. I've just added a few more things to this program. I'm going to show you how you can also use an array to help you with an accumulator. Um, so here I've got int total equals zero. I'm just setting up an accumulator using a regular variable. It's an integer, but it's not an array. It's just a regular variable, and it's called total. What I've done down here is I am confused. <laughs> 